Hello, Devil Talk 73 here, and what we're going to try to do this time is we're going to go to Germany and see if we can catch a big head or silver carp uni. So be sure you got a license. We're going to Germany. This is where we're going to spawn in, and what we're going to be using is our Brutus rod. Let me get do this, okay? Uh, Brutus eight nine foot ten. Thinner spin 4500, 022 fluoro line, our pear shaped float, and if that one won't get us out there far enough, we may have to change to an X series float, which is, <coughs> excuse me, this one. The only way you get that is to catch 20 pike in a row without missing any or any getting off the line, and you get that as a reward. Uh, that is a very very heavy float it'll cast a long way so I've used it a lot I'm down to 13 percent durability and you can't repair it so we'll, we'll start off with this one uh, X series barbless hook and vegetables are bait we have our leader set at 12 inches okay so we want to fish five starting 5 a.m. in the morning so let's go fishing and see what we can do Go down here, walk down here. And we're trying to get out about 135 feet, so I'm going to aim at this little open area here. Let's see what we can do. Use that other bobber. And I hope it doesn't go away. Because I can't get any more. So let's go ahead and change to that. You'll see the difference. This is a heavy bobber. do. That's all we got. So we'll have to do. <laughs> I don't think we have any friends in this room. Let's check. No. So we can do this. I think they're supposed to start hitting around between 5.30 and 6, but you can't fast forward to 5.30. You have to start at 5 or start at 6, so, so we just have to see what happens. And that bobber, that black bobber, black top bobber, man, it's hard to see out there. I can't see it. Maybe y'all can, but I can't. I know where I threw it. That's all. <laughs> that's all I know. We'll try it there, and then we'll try a little further to the left. I need to hear a ding. Come on. And for you people that are using the metric system it's 35 meters is what I try to cast which is roughly 132 133 feet and the 12 inch there we go the 12 inch leader is 30 centimeters come on now one ringy dingy Now the gentleman that suggested this had a 4X series 4 aught hook. I don't have a X series 4 aught other than a barbless, so that's why I'm using barbless. 
I may change this to regular four aught with barbs here in a minute. See if that makes a difference. We're getting dings. Let's catch a fish. Don't just play with it. Take it. Come on. Thank you, Dragonfly. Supposed to be good luck in real life. I've got pictures where my son and I were fishing on a private lake over just outside of Memphis, a little area called Germantown. And Dragonfly landed on my rod and just sat there forever. And I took several, several pictures, caught a couple fish, reeled them in. They weren't big fish, small fish, but that dragonfly just sat there. And I didn't want to cast back out. So I just, when I caught the fish, I just drop it straight down. And I catch little fish. But the dragonfly just sat there. There we go. Oh, let's see what we got here. A decent fish will set a marker there but y'all saw what I aimed at and just let it drift down let it drift down about 20 minutes it's a decent fish and see how the how the rods working what we got we've got a trophy silver carp cool now I'm gonna mark that so we'll have an aiming point. So I hit my M key on my keyboard. Up comes the map. Go down over here. Hit the plus. Okay. And here I put what it is. Four slash odd. Vegetables. Twelve inch liter. A M. See, none of that information is given down here. So if somebody comes here and I give them that marker, all they know is vegetables. They don't know what hook. They don't know what time. They don't know what leader. But you can do that. And then when you get done, you hit the check mark. And then the mark is that boy is successfully placed. So now we have something to aim at. I want to check my bobber too. Let's see. If it cost us any. We was at 13%. That didn't cost us anything. Okay. Probably drift that out. We'll see. See if the line goes out or if it comes back in. <laughs> Looks like it's going out very, very, very slowly. So we'll just let it sit there and ride. So I can lean back and relax now. That's one good thing about bobber fishing. With down rods you have to keep reeling and resetting because they'll, they'll drift along the bottom well with a bobber you want it to drift because it'll drift into the strike zone that's why the markers are not where you catch the fish but it's where you cast to to start trying to catch the fish because we probably caught that fish somewhere down in here but if you cast there, then it drifts down, so you're drifting out of the zone where the fish are. Yeah, it's not drifting anywhere. We're going to have to reset it. I have to be more exact.
exact with my casting. But to start off with a trophy, I'm not complaining about that by no means. must have caught a bigger silver carp in Weeping Willow. That's a tough place to fish. Same thing. People put the markers down, but they don't tell when uh, the hook, bait. You get the bait off the bottom, but that's, that's all you know. You don't know leader length, uh, how far out the cast, other than the marker. And then you more or less... You can be four or five feet either way. And four or five feet make a big difference when you're casting at a marker. The fishing here is slow, just like it is in Russia. And uh, not a whole lot you can do about it. It is what it is. We got another fish. smaller I believe the only way you can catch you is get your hook and your bait in the water what do we got here what do we got ah, a big head carp and see that's the first big head carp I've ever caught so that's why it's the new personal limit personal best so, well, if I catch a uni of that here, we caught, we caught, at least we've caught two of the carp we come here to try to catch. We we're going to come try to catch silver and big head. So we're two for two. That's pretty good. I got no complaints about that. We just want a bigger. That's not greedy. That's just the way fishermen are. Learn a little bit, pass it on. That's the fisherman's way. And this tip was given to me by Gantoff, G-A-N-T-A-L-F. He's a pretty good fisherman. He's been doing this a long time. So thank you, G. That's what I call him. I call him G. Or Gan. When I'm on the end of game, I say, hey, Gan, or hey, G. He knows who I'm talking to. But if you like the video, and so far we've, we've been successful what we came after, just haven't got a uni yet, but reach down there and hit that subscribe button down below the video. And I'd appreciate it. Then hit the notification so that whenever I put up a new video, you'll get notified, and maybe it's something you'll be interested in. All I'm trying to do is help you catch more and bigger fish. So help me help you. Leave a comment. Tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like. Tell me what you like to see. Tell me what you like more of. People like the weeping willow. We get done here, we may have to go there again and see what we can can figure out. I got markers all over the place, but I. <laughs> Like I say, I don't know leaders. I don't know. Uh, some of them are with open and closed feeders or with those uh, PVA bags or whatever. I don't know how to fish for those. I'll be the first one to tell you. But I try. If you're not trying and failing, you're not learning. If you try and succeed, you haven't learned anything. I've been messing with computers for over 40 years, and most of the things I learned is because I screwed screwed something up and had to figure out how to fix it. <laughs> uh. 
so I learned by my mistake. This is not a uni, this is another small one. I don't know what it is, but it's a small one. Another silver carp. Okay. Thank you. Cast getting shorter. I wish I had a heavier sinker. I think I've got an eight ounce on there. That's as heavy as it gets, to the best of my knowledge. And that's the heaviest bobber I've got. I might get out there further with a bot down rod, but that's not where the fish apparently are. There apparently feeding around the top with a 12 inch 12 inch leader it's only about that long tell you what let's do let's try both at the same time you never can tell I'm putting rod holder down to one down rod out there I've got one rigged up and we can use the down rod and the bobber so let's do that Let's see. Number two. Yeah, we're good there. I know we can throw this a lot further, so let's let's put it right about in there. I want that now about 135 feet. 36 good enough now let's get our other bobber rod bag now we got two irons in the fire Oops, now it's going to be short didn't hit the button just right no, that's not bad we'll live with that now i got to get down there where I can see what's going on with this bottom rod That bottom rod, I've got vegetables on it, a full, same hook, and then a uh, default leader. It's at 98 inches, so that bait can just float around, flop around. That's our bobber. We don't get dings on our down rod. It just goes, rattles the bell. be a little bigger just about oh I see what I did I hit the plus but I just about broke my line and that wouldn't work because I ain't got no extra ain't got no ain't got no education I do not have any extra eight ounce sinkers there we go I'll take a picture of that one trophy big head yeah No problem with that. That ain't gonna work. There we go. A man told me where the trophies are in this game, the unis are there also. Just gotta find them. Do, 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 do. Well, we're not getting actually getting any action off that bottom rod. That's okay. You never can tell. It only takes one big fish to make you really happy. Okay, we're at 610. So hopefully the bigger fish will start biting here in just a second. So this is a fairly, the weather is a fairly sharp curve on the downhill side we'll fish till seven and then 
switch to the late afternoon. We'll see when the curve starts up. Probably, mm, probably seven to nine p.m. We'll try and see what happens. Because where I live, carp come out and feed of an evening. drifting in and we hunted with bow and arrow out of a boat the boat has got lights all the way around from about halfway where we drive all the way around the front of the boat there's lights shining down the water bright LED lights not to attract the fish but so that we can see them and then it takes practice to learn how to shoot an arrow down through the water because water is a prism the fish is here and it looks like it's here. So you have to aim higher in order to make a strike. Just takes practice. But we fish with a, a reel on the bow and a fish arrow that's got a barb like a hook on the end of it. When you catch it, Put your gloves on, just start reeling it in by hand. It's an interesting way of fishing, believe me. Just another way of having fun. Uh, late July, early August, when it's 100 degrees out during the day, 105, you don't want to be out in the boat fishing then, you'll cook. I mean, literally cook from the inside out. Sunburn. It's just, it's not fun. It's not comfortable. But at night, then when the temperature goes down around 80, a different story. It's more fun. I like that they've added bottom rods here because that's, that's the way we fish for catfish around here. We don't bobber fish most of the time depending on the condition of the water. But we, we bottom fish for catfish. And sauger. Sauger's a good eating fish. They're vegetarians. Kind of like shovelbill or spoonbill catfish. They're vegetarians. They just eat stuff off the bottom. A real clean fish. You can put a, nail a shovelbill up to a tree, skin it, gut it, and without even washing it, you can open it up and smell the inside. There's no rancid smell to it, no dirty smell, no muddy smell. Just a good smell. Another big head. Okay, thank you. Like I said, it's like, kind of like Russia. Fishing here is slow, but we're not doing too bad. We're catching fish. You're not exactly jumping in the boat, but we're catching fish. That's okay with me. Like I say, I'm fishing, I'm having fun. And if you watch this far, then you're interested too. So I'd like to catch a uni. <laughs> That'd be nice. I like the two trophies. This time when we reel in, we'll put a regular four-aught hook on and see if that makes any difference. Most of the time, locally here, we use, uh, in the game they call it an octopus hook. And here, we call it treble hook, which it has a single shaft and then three hooks hanging down. And you use stink bait and you just mold it to the hook and throw it out. Or use chicken livers or chicken gizzards or just stinking meat. Uh, leave meat outside, chicken or ham or anything. Just leave it outside in the sun and let it get rancid and stinking. And you put gloves on. <laughs> put your gloves on so that stink doesn't get on you. Rubber gloves or, or uh, Playtex gloves and smear it on the on that hook and throw it out there. The bloodier, the worse it smells, the better catfish like it. They'll come for a long ways for following a 
the blood trail or smell. Let's put that other hook on. And that's why the European countries with the open and closed feeders, they generally do better. When you're fishing for like uh, Wells catfish, something like that, they do a little better because you can put a mixture of, of a uh, attractant and then spray it with a smell. If we get nothing on this other line, it'll tell us first it'll dingle, dingle, dingle. And when it hits, it'll jerk it hard left, hard right. So we'll be able to tell if there's something on there. I don't really think we're going to catch anything, but you never know. We got veggies down there, so. That's what they're eating here, so. Watch some other videos if you care to. Something that you're interested in fishing for. Maybe you pick up one one little tidbit. Uh, one of the comments I got was a gentleman saw the video on lucky spot fishing down in Louisiana. He'd never caught a uni spotted bass. And he watched the video, and within 30 minutes into the video, he caught his first one over there uh, to the right of the pelican hut I believe it is either pelican or pecan any pelican hut anyhow Pe probably pelican since Louisiana anyhow uh, and then 30 minutes later he caught his second and he was he was very proud and I'm happy for him too he said after fishing there for a long time he never caught one and then within 30 minutes caught two so he learned one little bit of where when how and what and caught two unis that he'd never caught before so I'm happy about that so I helped him that's what I'd like to do I like now I'm working on another channel uh, it's called Double Talk 73 Bob's Bits and I'm going to put some things on there just life things uh, what do you do with a bunch of pieces of soap you know when you take a shower you use soap you always got little chunks left over That what do you do with them well, I'm going to show you what you can do with them. How to uh, put them back into use again. Oh, now this is a bigger fish. Yeah, I like this. Oh, come on. Stay up there. I can tell it's a bigger fish the way they're real. The way I'm reeling. <laughs> this may be our uni. And I do believe that the uni spawn here is an hour, so if what we'll do is we'll, uh, if this is it, and it looks pretty good, we'll go ahead and warp onto the late afternoon and evening and see what happens with the fishing like then. It's pulling, like pulling line. Oh yeah, all right. This is going to be a new personal best, people. I do believe, I do believe. Wow. Pull that line. Wow. Wow, all right. Now what I'm doing... Is I'm holding down on my space bar and I'm tapping that far right enter button on my keyboard just as fast as I can, just over and over and over. Tap, 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 tap. You see my rod dancing. Every time it dances, I'm pressing that enter key. That's the way you fight big fish, where you turn them. So, see, when you do this, helps a little bit. Here we go. What we got? Yes. All right. All right. Yes.
see what the picture looks like. Alrighty. Now what we'll do is we'll press the H button. It gets rid of that. Then we can zoom in. Press the F13 button again. Take a picture of that. I like that. I like that. Yes. Thank you, game. You hit the escape button. That's a twenty-seven hundred dollar fish. Uni big head carp. That's about roughly thirty kilograms. Twenty-nine. That's a pretty good sized fish. Okay. Now we did we accomplished that, so let's uh see what's happening in the evening. We'll just bring this in. We'll throw it back out there when we get to the evening. Like I say, you never can tell. Can you tell I'm happy? <laughs> uh, okay. So now our evening peak starts at, s looks like 8 o'clock. It says 9, 8, 8 o'clock. So if we go to 7, we're right in here. Let's go to 8 o'clock. Well, let's go to 8 o'clock and fish on into the night. Let's do that. Okay. So go back here. Go to here. Here time. We want to go to 8 p.m. And the first thing we'll throw out here is our bottom rod. So about right. As good as any, better than most. Number seven out here. Do -do 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 -do. Now we're gonna start at eight and fish on into the night and see what see what develops. I'm already stoked. <laughs> I like catching big fish when they're new personal best, especially when they're unis. Oh, yeah. Now, if we catch a uni silver, that'd be all right. That'd be just awesome for me. And in real life, big fish come out at night. That's when they feed. You go down to Florida, you can fish all day long and not catch a uni. And as soon as you go into into night, a night peak at 9 o'clock or 11 o'clock or 3 a.m., you'll start catching bigger fish. Especially if you're using the right lure. I use an X-Series frog popper down there that you get by fishing 30 consecutive days or nights in Louisiana. And I've got a video on how to do that where all it costs you is just one gold coin and uh, you get it back because you fish 30 nights and you'll get as reward uh, at 1, 5, and, and 30, you'll wind up getting 8 gold coins. So you'll wind up netting 7 gold coins. The thing in the video that I didn't mention is that you want to put all your equipment either in your backpack or in your home storage. There we go. Because you, then you get the smallest rod, smallest, cheapest rod that you can get in the store. And that's what you take with you to go down. And you put all this stuff in your home storage before you go. A cap, boat, uh, jacket, rod holder, rods, everything. Everything but that one location in your stand, in your rod holder, rod, rod notification, no, no, the one through seven, one through five, depending on what you got, is the lightest, cheapest rod that you can get. The reason for that is when you get done uh, for 30 days, it's going to cost you $1,500 each time you extend. That's $45,000 it's going to cost you. Now, if you've got all your equipment in there, 
you're going to have a big repair bill too. But if you've all you got is that little one little cheap rod, your repair bill is not going to be very high. So that that allows you to get that lure cheaper. And then wherever you fish with it, use some 35 or 40 pound test line to fish with it because if you lose it, it's gone. You, you can't get it back unless you fish in a competition and place first, second, or third where it is one of the rewards. That's the only way you can get it back. And that's hard. I finished third in one competition and I've been fishing in them for a year. <laughs> now I'm not as proficient in, in the competitions as a lot of people but like I said, I try. I uh, finished 10th once. Uh, I finished in the top 20 a lot. But that doesn't get me anything. Top 10, I got $1,800 once for finishing 10th. <laughs> 1850 I'm sorry. I'm going to cheat myself out of $50. But that's how you get that lure. And you go down to Florida and you fish the night peaks. And it's a single speed retrieve, pop. It's a continuous retrieve, retrieve, pop, pop, pop. And you'll catch, you'll catch unis and trophies. You'll catch very few common. Most of what you catch will be trophies and unis. You're not going to make a lot of money, but you can have a lot of fun. And that's what it's all about. If the game's not any fun, don't play it. Find something else. Go outside and play basketball. Go for a walk. Take a kid fishing anyhow. When the weather gets nice, take a kid fishing. Take a child fishing. Little boy, little girl, doesn't matter. Just take a child fishing. They'll enjoy it and so will you. If you don't use nothing but a $5 cane pole and you're catching little old brim off a little dock somewhere. If it's the first fish they'll ever catch, you'll never forget it, and they never will either, and they'll never forget that you're the one that took them there. That's what's cool about kids or children. The children are very honest with you. They either love you with all their heart or they hate you with all their heart. You know where you stand with kids. There's no doubt about it. It's too bad that as as we grow older, we learn to connive and, and hide our true feelings and put on a facade and be plastic people instead of being open with others. I try to be just as open as I can. If I don't like somebody, I just tell them, look, I just soon not talk to you. There are very few people that I don't like, but there are some. They have either done me or done my family wrong or harm, and I just I don't want to be around them. So I try not to. Because if you're happy and in a good mood, being around somebody like that will just kill your good mood. So I just move away, walk away. Whistle a song. Whistle while I walk. Do -do 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 -do. Well, come on, fish. Come on, fish. You're obviously not going to bite that bottom rod, are you? See, I don't have a feeder on it, so there's nothing drawn down to the bottom. We'll find out shortly if any, there any action all at night. I had one gentleman say in a comment that I don't cut my videos. I don't. From beginning to end, what happens, happens. Uh, I used to watch these pro bass fishermen on TV, and they tell you, use this lure, and, and you fish it this way and you work this way and then all of a sudden they got a bass on <laughs> and it, it might have been 
two hours or three hours in between a time that told you how to how to fish with it and catch the bass. But all of a sudden, they got a big bass on it. <laughs> Wait a minute, what happened to the other two hours where you could was throwing and reeling and throwing and reeling and got nothing? This is not a little fish. We got a decent fish on here. That trophy, okay. Yeah. So like I said, where the trophies are, the uni should be. So we're fishing in the right place. Thank you, G. All, all you can do is know where, when, what, and how, and then try to adapt it to your style of fishing. That's all you can do. And hope you catch fish. <laughs> Get kind of bored and just drown in worms in real life. Drown in worms, drown in crickets. Drown a minnow. You, you don't think you can drown a minnow, but when you hook that hook through its dorsal fin, it goes down there. It ain't. It don't breathe quite as good because it can't move the, through the water to move water through its gills quite as good. So you drown that bait. My daddy used to tell me, he said, the only thing you're going to catch with dead bait is dead fish. <laughs> Come on, strip out some line. Come on. I ain't going to do it. That's okay. It's a decent fish. May not be no 61 pound big head, but it's a decent fish. See how the, the line and rod graphs charts are staying up first in the red, orange. What do we got? What do we got? I got a trophy big head. All right. So we know the fish bite at night, too, or late evening. Got about 18 minutes to get dark. 18 game minutes. So see, I make notes, and that's what I suggest you do. Make notes. I had to had to scratch this out and rewrite it because I couldn't read my own. <laughs> I couldn't read what I wrote. But I've got pages and pages of notes of where, what, when, how. And if I'd have been smart, I'd have got me a, a three-ring binder like or spiral tablet like this and put that information in here and categorize it either by lake or by fish. Lake would probably be the easiest. Uh, and you'll see on this, I made a drawing of where to land because when you come to Germany, there's four lakes across it, four landing spots across the top, one here. There's another one down over here. I wanted to land in this one. So the only way I could remember to be sure that I landed that one, they draw me a map. So when I come to the lake, I know that that's where I want to be. I didn't write down the name of it because I got a picture of it, so or a drawing of it, so I know where to land. And the easy, good thing about this is when you land, you just walk right straight out. Now the other tip that he gave it had a mixture and an open feeder and, and uh, duck muscle meat, a little bit of everything else. But when you land at that same location, you go to the right, whew, a long, long, long walk, and then find some down on the bank where some trees hang over, and that's where you fish. But I don't know what the mixture was he had in his uh, feeder. So that probably wouldn't have done me much good to go down there and just throw a line out muscle meat on because there's the way he caught it was with the muscle meat and the attractant but I made a note of it so one of these days I'll, I'll give it a try to see that I can make up uh, some kind of mixture uh, a carp attractant and use the muscle meat and go down there and fish and see what it happens
that's like in the weeping willow do you use the camouflage carp sinker or do you use this or use that it's uh, it's much more involved and the more involved it gets the more it costs you <laughs> and the more it costs you so if you look there's a 15 pages of new baits for weeping willow and if you look, most of them are gold coin, cost you gold coin to buy. But if you look on other pages, you can buy that same bait for cash instead of gold coin, bait coins. And if you stay there more than just one day, it's, and it's expensive to fish there, but if you stay there more than one day, you can earn enough, more than an, enough cash to pay for the bait that you buy rod and reel setup if you use their deep horizon and the other big carp rods and the reels that go with them you're going to spend $125,000 for a fishing rig it takes a long time to make that money back but once you got them you got them and then you can go farm sturgeon uh, in San Joaquin Delta in California and you can make between thirty-one and thirty-two thousand dollars per peak. So if you spend one hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars for a rig, you can make that money back in in four four peaks. Which that's that's what I did to come here. I fished three peaks. I made a little over ninety grand because I knew I was going to have to spend eighteen thousand dollars for travel and license, and uh, already had the bait. Okay, so. I'm ahead of the game so far. But if I had to buy the bait, you know, let's see, how many vegetables do I have? I got 503. I don't like to come anywhere short of bait. <laughs> when I fill up my bait container, like for large minnows, I usually buy 1,000. Shiners, I buy up to 600. Large cut bait, 1,000. A duck muscle meat, a thousand. Now I know that costs a lot of money because you're paying roughly, I think it's seven hundred and fifty dollars per ten. And you buy a thousand of them, you're paying seventy-five thousand dollars for bait. But then you don't have to worry about running out. Nothing worse than running out of bait when the fish are hidden. It's happened to me before, and I said when I got the money, it wasn't going to happen again. So I do, I fill up with bait. You're going to use it sooner or later. So when you're at the home screen, buy as much bait as you can afford for where you're going to go fish. If you're going to go to Michigan, you know, you're going to use, if you're going for uh, clear and regular musky, you know you're going to need large minnows. So buy, buy two or three hundred. Uh, shiners, if you're going to go for tiger muskies, you know you're going to use shiners. So buy a couple of hundred. If you're going to go for blues, and you'll be catching a lot of them, buy you four or five hundred if you can afford it and that way you don't run short on bait when, when the fish are hitting and if you use the four bottom rods so you're throwing four bait out there at a time the one good thing about that in the competitions you get hung up and you pull the thing in you done lost your bait silver uh, in non-competitive fishing if you get hung up and reel in you haven't lost your bait you just throw it back out sometimes you do if you're fishing for regular musky and you really get hung up and reel in you'll lose that bait and I don't know why sometimes you do sometimes you don't I don't know but if you've got plenty of bait it doesn't matter but there's places over there in Weeping Willow where one of those boilies you get 10 of them two thousand dollars nineteen hundred fifty dollars that's two hundred dollars a piece for bait <laughs> that's that's expensive man I think too expensive but that's the way the devs have designed the game so you'll spend more cash or more coins so you like to buy more coins or learn how to earn them that uh 30-day fishing thing 
all the lakes you go to, except for your travel costs. You don't even have to buy a license. You just travel. Because you're not going to catch any fish, so you're not going to get any fines. So you can travel every lake in the map. And Colorado, North Carolina, White Moose Lake, all of them. And you can fish 30 days and get, each time you do, you'll have a net of either seven or eight bait coins. So if there's a dozen lakes, thank you, thank you. All right, there's that uni we wanted. Oh, now we got both of them, so I'm happy. Okay, anyhow, if there's 12 lakes and you wind up with netting eight coins per lake, if you spend a day, and it takes about less than 10 minutes to go to each lake and fish that 30 days. So you could wind up with a hun roughly 100 bait coins at the end of a couple hours. Uh, it's worth it because you're using bait coins. I use them for advancing time. So I don't have to wait 45 minutes, an hour and a half before I want to go and find. Okay. I'm, r I'm flapping my jaws now. So we caught our uni silver carp. We caught our uni big head. We caught some trophies. Uh, I consider that a successful trip. So now we know where to fish for them in Germany. So, and what to use. We know where, what, when, and how. That's, that's the four things you need to know. So thank you for watching. Take, your, take a minute to subscribe or a second and hit that notification so that if when I put up any new videos, you get notified and uh, maybe it's something you're interested in, maybe it's not. But uh, that way you don't have to go hunting me. And I'll try to keep that same thumbnail to make me easy to find when you're scrolling. Uh, it kind of stands out, and I like that. But anyhow, uh, I appreciate you watching. Uh, good luck, tight lines. God bless you and your family. Uh, thank you very much for watching. So please subscribe. And leave me a comment. Something you like, something you don't like. Uh, something you'd like to see, any way that I can help you, whatever, just leave me a comment. Uh, but anyhow, y'all come back now you're here, and I'll catch you later on in another video. Have fun, catch you some fish, catch you some big fish, catch you more fish. <laughs>